Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. It's a lovely day, folks, and here is ASEAN News. Singapore extends COVID-19 boundaries after increasing infections. Singapore will tighten COVID-19 curbs to limit social gatherings to two people and make working from home a default in a bid to contain a spike in infections and reduce pressure on the healthcare system. Despite a rapid vaccination drive, the city-state has been seeing more than 1,000 daily cases, including 1,504, the highest number since the start of the pandemic. Currently, we are almost at the 1,600 cases, and if the trend continues, the number of cases is likely to double to 3,200 a day by next week, and may even increase beyond that after that. Singapore Minister add that the jump in COVID-19 cases in the island of 5.7 million people had put tremendous pressure on its health care system. The latest carbs come into force and will run until October 24. <laughs> Authorities are also trying to put in place arrangements for more people to recover at home and to scale up isolation facilities. Singapore's attempt to encourage more COVID-19 patients to stay at home caused some confusion with a hotline overwhelmed by calls. To further protect its population, the Southeast Asian country is also expanding its booster vaccine shot program to cover those aged 50 to 59 years old from early October. Some 82% of the population in Singapore had been fully vaccinated. The United States and Singapore promised cooperated on various bilateral issues. United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Singapore Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan says the United States and Singapore pledged to work together on a wide range of bilateral issues including climate change, pandemic preparedness space and supply chains resilience. The comments came as the two renewed the Singapore and United States Third Country Training Program Memorandum of Understanding and a document in a place since 2012 that provides regional courses on multilateral issues and expanded the agreement to include new courses on climate change and environmental sustainability. Space, a new partnership for growth. The two allies says they will work to expand collaboration on smart cities and cybersecurity with an eye toward both the financial and military sectors. According to the statement issued by the White House, the United States and Singapore are also exploring areas to expand bilateral cooperation in space. United States Vice President Kamala Harris visited Singapore laying the groundwork to bolster economic and security ties with Singapore and other key allies. Fault in central Vietnam caused by tropical storm Dianmo. Fault left by tropical storm Dianmu inundated areas across Nghe An, province of central Vietnam of three days after the storm made landfall. State broadcaster VTV shows footage of flooded streets and neighborhoods across Nghe An. Authorities dispatches rescue teams to send food aid to stranded residents in some of the affected areas. VTV adds, Dianmu make landfall in Vietnam, at least 600 houses damaged and 2,500 acres or 1,011 hectares of crops destroyed by the floods in Nghe An province. China contributes to world peace and development by achieving moderate prosperity. A white paper released by Chinese State Council Information Office says China has contributed to global peace and development by achieving moderate prosperity in all respects in the country. The white paper's title, Overall Moderate Prosperity in China, gives a systematic account of what China's all-around development of moderate prosperity and how it has been achieved. 
On July 1st, Chinese President Xi Jinping, also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China, CPC Central Committee, announced that China had realized its first centenary goal of building the country into a moderately prosperous society in all respects. Speaking at a press conference on releasing the white paper, Ning Jize, deputy head of the National Development and Reform Commission and head of the National Bureau of Statistics says, achieving moderate prosperity in all respects has made China more prosperous, the people happier and society more stable, which is in itself is a big contribution to the world. China has been the largest contributor to the world economy since 2006, making an average annual contribution of more than 30% and become a major stabilizer and driver of the global economy. The White Paper says, after the outbreak of COVID-19, China became the first country to contain the virus, reopen its economy and achieve economic expansion leading global recovery and injecting impetus into the global economy. China achieved its development in all fields in the country. According to a white paper on moderate prosperity released by the State Council Information Office, China has achieved its development across the board. The white paper titled China's Epic Journey from Poverty to Prosperity gives a systematic account of what China's all-around moderate prosperity and how it has been achieved. China's building of a moderately prosperous society. In pursuing moderate prosperity, China emphasizes balanced, coordinated and sustainable progress in economic, political, cultural, social and eco-environmental fields. On the second section, Xu says the White Paper looked into what China has achieved in realizing prosperity through all-round development by using a lot of data and facts. The White Paper covers sustainable and healthy economic growth, expanding people's democracy, flourishing culture, improvement in people's well-being, and historic changes to the eco-environment. It uses a large amount of data and facts to, to depict the outlook of a moderately prosperous society. Chinese President Xi Jinping, also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China, CPC Central Committee, announces that China had realized its first centenary goal of building a moderately prosperous society in all respects. At least six people died and two others disappeared in floods in Thailand. The country's Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation says at least six people have died in the floods and two remaining missing. The department also announced flood warnings for areas along Chao Phraya River, including the capital of Bangkok. Thailand volunteers on power motors are flying into flood-affected areas in central Thailand to drop off supplies to residents. A team of around seven to eight power motorists working for the charity Pit Lok Association make trips to Sukhothai province on the weekend to help out local residents. Vichai Tiasan, who leads the team of volunteers paramotorists, tells Reuters that the flood covers most of areas of Sukhothai province. The situation is worse in comparison to past years. Vichai says he and his team will continue making trips to other affected areas across Sukhothai. Flooding triggered by a tropical storm has affected 23 provinces and 58,977 families across central and northern Thailand. Philippine Senate approves a raising age of sexual consent to 16. Bill 2332, an act increasing the, the Philippine Senate approves a bill raising the minimum age of sexual consent to 16 years old, a move aimed at protecting children from rape and other forms of sexual abuse. 22 affirmative votes, no negative, no negative votes, one abstention, Senate Bill 2332 is approved on third reading. <coughs> The current age of consent, which is used to determine statutory rape, is 12 years old, the lowest in Southeast Asia and among the lowest in the world. The bill will consider sexual contact by an adult with anyone 16 years old or younger as rape. During a virtual hearing, 22 senators vote in favor of passing the bill, while one abstained, saying some of its aspects needed to be refined. It still requires presidential approval, a move that is seen as highly likely given that Congress already passed the bill in December. Junior, 
<coughs> Japan ends its COVID-19 state of emergency on September 30. Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga said Japan lifted coronavirus state of emergency in all regions on September 30 for the first time in nearly six months as the number of new cases and deaths fall and the strain of the medical system eases. We have decided to lift all state of emergency in 19 prefectures and quasi-emergency in eight prefectures on September 30 and will gradually ease restrictions imposed on restaurants and bars. Daily cases have fallen nationwide from more than 25,000 last month to 1,128, but the opening will be gradual with some curbs on restaurants and large-scale events remaining for about a month to prevent a resurgence. Officials said the government will introduce a certification system whereby only approved restaurants could stay open until 9 p.m. Japan has largely avoided explosive outbreak seen in countries like the United States and India, although it fared poorly by East Asian standards, with about 1.7 million cases and just about 17,500 deaths. The Delta variant sparked a fifth wave of COVID-19 in Japan that drove infections to record levels last month, putting so much strain on hospitals that some patients ended up dying at homes without receiving care. The emergency lift shortly after the ruling Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, picks its new chief who replaced Suga as premier thanks to its parliamentary majority. Suga decided not to run in the election after his approval ratings tanked due to his handling of the pandemic. South Korea expresses regret over North Korea's missile launch. South Korea's Defense Ministry expresses regret over North Korea's latest missile launch amid Pyongyang's calls for the United States and South Korea to scrap their hostile policy. Uh, South Korean military said earlier in the day North Korea fired an unidentified projectile towards the sea of its east coast while Japan's Defense Ministry says it appears to be a ballistic missile without elaborating. Seoul's Defense Ministry spokesman Bu Seung-chang says the ministry is analyzing the intention of North Korea's missile launch and it is regrettable given the situation of the Korean Peninsula, which is needed to be stabilized. The launch came just before North Korea's ambassador to the United Nations urged the United States to give up its hostile policy towards Pyongyang and said no one could deny his country's right to self-defense and to test weapons. Activists hope for changes after Japanese Prime Minister's competitors support same-sex marriage. The lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and questioning rights activists are hoping that Japan may finally allow same-sex marriage if Taro Kono, who's publicly supported gay marriage, becomes the country's next Prime Minister, but change will not come easily. Kono is seen as the leading contender to win the ruling party's leadership vote and become Premier. The four candidates for the Liberal Democratic Party leadership, Kono and Seiko Noda, have supported gay marriage. Same-sex marriage is only legal in Taiwan, in Asia. Activist says the fact that same-sex marriage, long seen as a cultural flashpoint among conservatives in Japan, is even being discussed in the leadership race shows how much wider acceptance the issue has garnered among lawmakers and the public. Honestly, I was happy when I heard the news. The fact that Mr. Kono, a strong candidate for the ruling party's president, clearly expressed his support for same-sex marriage has a great impact. Same-sex marriage is not legal in Japan, but there has been a gradual move to broader acceptance of gay couples. Since Shibuya Ward in Tokyo became the first municipality to issue certificates recognizing same-sex partners in 2015, some 100 local governments have followed suit to cover over a third of the country's population. Such certificates recognize same-sex couples but provide limited legal rights. A March poll by the Asahi newspaper found that the 65% supported gay marriage, while 22% opposed it. While advocate says, but despite the public support, political changes will be a different matter. 
That's a wrap up. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a great and a nice weekend. See you soon.